Thank you for watching the Tank Museum's YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. This is a Guy Armoured Car Mark I, built by Guy Motors of Wolverhampton. And it really is one of the most interesting armoured vehicles to be developed for the British Army before the Second World War. And we'll look at all the different features in a minute. Now, the thing about Guy is that they were, were a big manufacturer of buses, lorries, cars. They didn't do a tremendous amount of military vehicles, but they did do some, mainly six-wheeled lorries and that sort of thing. And that was what they were famous for. But this armoured car is quite interesting. For a start, it's got four-wheel drive. Now, up until this time, we'd had mostly the ordinary old four-by-two armoured cars, like the Rolls-Royce that we saw earlier. And we, there were some six-by-four armoured cars, like the big Lanchester and the Crosley. But this was the first we ever had with four-wheel drive. In fact, they tested the chassis, and they tested it against some rather fancy four-wheel drive vehicles. This one was much more conventional with beam axles and not what you'd really want from a, an advanced vehicle in any sense. But it did very well during the trials and as such was accepted. Now it was built by Guy Motors, as I say, and it was, they were the first to actually start welding armour. Up until now, in fact, with the prototypes of these, they'd all been riveted. But from now on, you can see welding creeping in. And they were the first firm to start welding. It is said that they pioneered the welding. I've still got me doubts about that because Royal Ordnance, who built many of the armoured bodies, had actually investigated welding a little before this vehicle appeared, but uh, I think that's only my opinion. So, but they, they do say they, and they were given quite a posh certificate for having designed this in the first place. The armour is about 15 millimetres thick, and the vehicle carries a crew of three. That's a driver who's housed in the box here, and two men in the turret. It's armed with the two machine guns, a Vickers 303 and a Vickers 50 caliber. And they actually described it when it was first built as a wheeled tank. It was actually classified as the wheeled tank Mark I. It's a term that faded from use, thank goodness. And they adopted armored car, which is much closer to what it is. But that was the term they used originally. The vehicle weighs about well, six tons, which is why you find the disc on the front there says seven on it, because that means it can cope with a bridge with that sort of loading, but not anything lighter. It will break through. So that's why the vehicle is like it is. The first type to be welded in the British Army, the first armoured car with four-wheel drive. So it makes it quite an interesting vehicle from that point of view. The only problem was Guy had so many commitments to other machines that they were building, notably buses, which were running short, and the lorries they were building for the army, that they had to give up these armoured cars. They were actually handed over to Humber, but we'll see one of those in due course. But um, for a start, this is the very first of their type. They were built as Mark I, about 50 of those, and they built the rest as Mark I-A, which were the same, except they were armed with Beza machine guns instead of Vickers, but that was the only real difference. Now, the vehicle is quite interesting from a, a technical point of view. It's powered by a Meadows four-cylinder engine, which was quite a... Most guy vehicles were powered by Meadows engines. Meadows were also a Wolverhampton firm, and they made engines only. And the, there was a four-cylinder one in this, but they it does tend to make the vehicle slightly underpowered. It had a top speed of about 40 miles an hour, which really wasn't quite fast enough. So that was one thing against it, having a, what you might call a weakish engine. The Humbers had six-cylinder um, Humber engines, which were a lot more powerful. But the, um, the guy only had a four-cylinder engine, which made it rather feeble. 
but um, quite effective in its way. Now, the first production of these, after the prototypes, um, saw six of them going to France in 1940. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me, served with Phantom, which was the um, number three air mission, it used to be called. It became Phantom later. It was the headquarters of... Um, its job was to report back directly to headquarters in Britain rather than um, to the headquarters of the army in France. And it was quite an interesting unit. They had six of these vehicles, all of which had to be left behind in the end. And after that, you find a few of them turning up in the desert. They're mostly prototypes, which you can tell straight away because they're riveted all over, as distinct from welded. And they also broke down for a pastime. And you, you see this film of them all leaving the works and so on. But out in the desert, they, the weaknesses that were inherent in this vehicle were brought out and the vehicle began to pack up so that the army didn't like them at all. But the others, they served for a while with a, a, a really odd organisation, part of the old Morris mission, which became the Royal Protection Squad. And they had Humber armoured cars, which rolled out with the Royal vehicles, um, be they armoured saloons or protected saloons anyway. And they used these as escort for that. These were also distributed to the Belgian, the Dutch, and then the Canadian armies when they arrived in Britain. That is the uh, armies of countries that had been overrun by the Germans that were forming in Britain, plus, of course, the Canadians who came across the Atlantic. And they all had guys for a while, pity them, but there we are, it's all that was available. And uh, they did quite well with them, quite enjoyed driving them, apparently, so they say. Um, it's quite a nice vehicle from that point of view. Quite reliable once they got used to them, but initially not really so good. But uh, it's quite amazing to see one survive. A few of them went to British regiments later on, but they were not used in action again. And it's probably just as well. They were a little bit too slow and liable with the thin armour and the old machine guns to get into trouble. So they weren't used in action, but they were used for training and they were used quite a lot in Great Britain. So you, you could actually see them in service until almost the end of the war. This is probably the last guy in existence anywhere, the last guy armoured anyway. They really are a rarity nowadays. And um, out of only 50 built, it's quite remarkable that one survived. So at least we've got this vehicle here. And it seems to be the first of the production batch, the first welded vehicle ever to be used by the British Army, which gives it some sort of status. But uh, that's really the whole guy story for you. We have a fantastic selection of books, models, clothes and other gifts on the Tank Museum online shop. When you buy from our online shop, you are supporting the Tank Museum charity and that means we can carry on caring for our collection and producing this content. If you have supported us already, thank you very much. Subscribe and do keep watching.